So many M1 machines and so little time. In this video, I'm gonna help you decide which one of these beautiful Mac and iPad machines you should get. So let's get into it. How's it going, y'all? It is Ben Aqua, the M1 machine enthusiast, apparently. I am really, really into the M1 chip from Apple, and there's a pretty huge reason why it's freaking fast. It does so many things so well, and they kind of have brought this magic back to the Mac. So yeah, I'm not gonna go too deep into the specs of each one of these because then this video would be about 3,000 hours long. In this video, I'm more just gonna go over each machine and the pros and cons of each in my experience and help you decide which one should you get? So let's start out with the Mac Mini. This is my beloved 16 gigabyte RAM, 256 gigabyte storage. The Mac Mini M1 has served me incredibly well for video editing, photo editing, music production. And if you wanna check out my music, head over to Apple Music and Spotify, search for Ben Aqua, follow me on there, stream all my stuff, share it with your friends and family. I highly appreciate all your support. And I've made a bunch of songs and videos on this Mac Mini M1. This is my baby, I wanna kiss it, but there's probably all kinds of germs on there. But yeah, who is the Mac Mini M1 for? I think the Mac Mini M1 is for people that want just the computer so that they can get all of their own peripherals because the Mac Mini M1 is just a computer it does not have a built-in screen, obviously. It doesn't come with even a keyboard or a mouse or a trackpad or a microphone or a webcam or a monitor or a display. You have to buy all that stuff separately. So that's why I think that the Mac Mini M1 is for people who just want a really powerful Mac which this definitely is. And by the way, definitely get 16 gigabytes of RAM if you're wondering, and that kind of goes for all the M1 machines that I'm talking about except for the iPad Pro. But yeah, anything you throw at this Mac Mini M1, even 4K video editing with multiple layers of 4K on top of each other and effects and color grading, this is just buttery smooth and it just annihilates everything. And I haven't heard the fan go off on this Mac Mini M1 once. Another pro of the Mac Mini M1 is it is incredibly cheap for what you get. You can get a refurbished base model with eight gigabytes of RAM for under $600 in the Apple refurbished store, which to me is just bonkers because that machine, you can do almost everything on there, even some light video editing. This one, once I added 16 gigabytes of RAM, came out to about $900 after tax. And even at that price, I think this is an incredible deal. And I love that it has multiple ports on the back, including including an HDMI port, two Thunderbolt, two USB-A ports, and an Ethernet port. It also has a built-in fan, and it's a beautiful machine. It looks really great on a desk. I think the Mac Mini M1 is one of my favorite devices that I've ever used. Let's now talk about the MacBook Air M1. This is a 16 gigabyte, one terabyte MacBook Air, and it is a beautiful, I can get it open. Beautiful machine. The display is beautiful. I love the keyboard on this thing. I actually just got this a few days ago. This screen has an incredible amount of colors, accuracy, sharpness. It's beautiful. But yeah, the MacBook Air is obviously something that is incredibly portable and it has that juicy M1 chip. So of course, it's incredibly fast. I almost don't even have to say that about any of these machines again because they're all just incredibly super, super buttery smooth. I've done video editing on this machine. It does it amazingly, 4K editing, no problem. And I love just how portable this is. And I can also plug this into my monitor setup, the same monitor that I use with my Mac mini. And it actually charges the MacBook Air through a USB-C connection. I do wish there were more input and output ports. Like there's only two USB-C Thunderbolt ports on one side and then a headphones jack on the other and that's it. But this is obviously meant for people that are more on the go. It's incredibly thin. The MacBook Pro is a little bit more expensive. You do get a slightly brighter screen. You get a better microphone and some other better internals, including a fan. This MacBook Air does not have a fan, but honestly, I haven't really had any issues with overheating. This thing has stayed so cool to the touch. And yeah, I love this MacBook Air. This may actually be my main M1 machine, even over the Mac Mini M1 and the iMac 
and the iPad Pro. I think the MacBook Air M1 is actually the best value out of all the machines I'm talking today if you want something mobile and you want the full macOS experience. So now let's talk about the iPad Pro with M1 chip that was just released. This is the 12.9 inch model, and this is an incredible device too. Obviously, this is a pretty different device from everything else I'm talking about, because this is, of course, an iPad. It does not have Mac OS, it uses iPad OS. And the screen on this 12.9 inch M1 iPad is one of the best screens, one of the best displays that I've ever seen Apple create. Actually, these two screens, the iMac, M1 and the iPad Pro M1 are probably the two most beautiful screens I've ever seen. So obviously the iPad Pro is meant for people that want a more mobile device. It's lighter and thinner than the MacBook Air. So if that's a thing, you might want to get the iPad Pro where I think the limitations of the iPad Pro with M1 chip are, you know, it doesn't have the full Mac OS experience. So it doesn't have Final Cut Pro. It doesn't have Logic Pro. I use Ableton Live to make my music. It doesn't have that. The iPad Pro is more limited by the software experience on here. A lot of the apps actually work really well. For example, photo editing on here is amazing and I actually prefer photo editing on my iPhone and iPad. This has that fancy mini LED screen and it is blazingly fast. It's a different experience than using a Mac. The built-in cameras are really good. I don't really have a lot of complaints about this 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro other than the fact that it is kind of big for my use. So if you're just doing stuff like emailing and surfing the internet and you don't need the full Mac operating system, definitely get the iPad Pro. It's incredible for using the Apple Pencil to sketch things and draw on here, but it is kind of heavy in my opinion for just like sitting on the couch and watching something for a while. I would almost recommend getting the 11 inch version instead because I feel like the 11 inch is a little easier to hold. The display on that 11 inch is also amazing and it's just as fast as this 12.9 inch version and it's a couple hundred dollars cheaper. It's a personal preference, but by all means, this iPad Pro with M1 chip is freaking amazing. And last, but definitely not least, is this beautiful iMac 24 inch with M1 chip. This is the pink iMac and on the back of it has this beautiful red color and this is a statement piece, okay? This iMac though is a work of art. Every square inch and detail on this iMac is just so well thought out and this display Let's talk about this display because honestly, this is one of the best, if not the best displays, like I said earlier, that I've ever seen on any device ever. It has this gorgeous design. Look how incredibly thin this thing is. It's absolutely insane. So the iMac is more meant for people that want that all-in-one experience with the built-in webcam, amazing screen, peripherals come with it. You get the keyboard, mouse, trackpad. Everything just comes built into the one machine and it's just beautiful. Some people like myself actually might prefer a bigger screen though because 24 inches is a pretty good amount of screen real estate, but you know, I'm pretty used to using a 27 inch monitor and sometimes even a 32 inch monitor and this 24 does feel a little small sometimes. So if you want something that's more of an all-in-one experience that has an incredible value, like this thing starts at 1299, this is the 1499 model that has the upgraded extra ports here. And then there's this beautiful keyboard that has touch ID. Everything also is color coordinated, which is really cool. You can see the pink on the keyboard and the pink down here on this iMac. It's totally subjective because not everybody likes this iMac design. Some people do not like these white bezels on the front. I actually don't personally mind them. And then there's also this huge chin in the front, which I personally don't mind, but I can totally see why some people would rather just have a really thin bezel in the front, maybe even a black bezel and no chin. This iMac is the best value when it comes to a desktop machine. The Mac Mini M1 is a pretty cheap machine, but you do have to add that monitor, the keyboard, the mouse, the webcam. So by the time you get all that stuff, you're actually probably going to be paying more than just getting an iMac. And the star of the show for the iMac is this display. Just to get a display that's this level of quality, you basically are gonna have to spend almost as much, if not more, than the iMac to get something like an LG Ultrafine Thunderbolt model. Value-wise, iMac is probably the way to go if you want that kind of all-in-one computing experience. So those are some of my very convoluted thoughts about all these M1 machines. I really hope this video was helpful for you. Let me know down below which 
which M1 machine you have or which one you're thinking about getting. Also hit me up with your questions in the comments below. You know I will love seeing y'all down there. And if you want to engage with us even more in the House of Aqua Discord, I would love to see you there as well. The link for that is in the description below. Smash that thumbs up button if you liked it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.